Is training with your Kali single stick the same as training with a machete or a long blade? We're gonna take a look at that in detail coming up. Welcome back to the S2 Strategic Defense Channel. My name is Nick. Please do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, turn on that notifications bell. Get in the comments section. Let me know if you like this video and what you'd like for me to cover in a future video. I'd be happy to try and work that out with you. So real quick, it's a common question that I get from my Kali students, JKD students, sometimes non-martial arts students, because they hear a different instructor or video on YouTube or maybe one of their classmates say something that is, I don't know, kind of true, kind of not. And the question is this, is training with your single stick the same as training with the mid-length or even a full-length blade, meaning a sword or a machete or something of that nature, right? And the answer is yes and no. There are differences. You have to understand the two differences to be able to kind of capitalize on training with one. Now, Kali really prides itself on what we call universal concepts. What I learned with one weapon applies to another weapon, applies to another weapon, applies to another weapon. In modern day Kali, I think some of the newer instructors really do a, a kind of a poor job in explaining what the small differences are to help bridge the gap between the two. They just go with universal concepts. It applies straight across the board. Everybody's happy. And that's not exactly true. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys some of the similarities as well as some of the differences. So let's start off with the single stick. When I have a new Kali student, the first thing that I do is I teach them, aside from, you know, base and posture, is basic angles, right? For example, we have the angle one, the angle two, angle three, angle four, and angle five is the thrust in. Now, if I use that with a machete or a long blade, let's just say angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five, that remains the same. Cool. So those articulations are alike. Now, the second thing that I'll teach my students is typically what we call uh, combined angles, meaning patterns. The Ekis pattern, right? The one and the two. The all the vase, upward figure eight, okay? The crossada, the cross type of a uh, combination. The redondo, the circular hit, okay? To the vertical hit. The florete even, right? Okay, sometimes referred to as a trapilong. Is that the same with the blade? Well, Here's the Ekis pattern, so that's the same. The all the vase, that's the same. The crossada, that's the same, okay? The redondo, around the head, circular strike, vertical strike, okay, so that's the same. The florette is gonna change a little bit because the stick, we roll inside of the hand, whereas the blade, we make articulations in the whole wrist, okay? It's done a little bit differently. Now, there's a lot of tactics that apply to the blade, uh, the, the uh, florete seguida and, and a whole bunch of other ones that are specific to the blade that you really don't apply to the stick. We'll talk about that in a different video, part of it in this video. Okay, the nice part there is that you have the universal concepts that apply, meaning articulation of the, of the weapons are typically similar, if not identical to the same, okay? But there are some differences, and so let's talk about the differences. First and foremost, understand the physical characteristics of the two weapons. Number one, the stick is round, okay? The blade is flat, has a cutting edge, and a pointy tip, okay? So at the very least, you already know, hey, the end result's gonna be different. One is going to be blunt force trauma impact weapon, and one's gonna be slashing and puncturing, right? Cutting edge, pointy end, okay. So we know that the end game's a little bit different. We also know that if it's round, that when you defend, it'll bounce off, it'll reflect off of its, uh, its target easier. Where if it's sharp, it'll slice into it, which means it doesn't bounce right back to you. Does that make sense? Okay, now I want you to understand something here. The tactics between sword and impact weapon are very much different. I'll show you guys something. With the single stick, okay? Yes, we can have those similar manipulations, but a lot of times we will grab from one end to the other, meaning I'm holding the stick on one end right here, 
let's just say if I make some kind of a manipulation, now I'm grabbing the stick somewhere else. If I did that with the blade, I would end up grabbing the cutting edge, which means I'm cutting my own fingers. So that's gonna be a little bit different, okay? The other thing that I wanna point out to you is that in close proximity, we have two-handed tactics with the, blade, uh, with the stick. We have thrusting and pushing and these kinds of things going on that because of the simple fact that I can't put my uh, hand on each end, you can't do that with the blade, right? The single stick also brings out things like uh, joint manipulation, locking, throwing, chokes, right? So we learn how to do, you know, scissor chokes and collar chokes and these kinds of things with the stick. You can't do that with the blade. Now, let's get away from the stick and talk about the blade. Because it is pointy and sharp all the way through, we don't need as much surface area of the cutting edge. We need the tip and the first third of the weapon because we're slashing and we're using the point. Get it? Because thrusting and slashing at the very end of it buys us distance, we tend to not get into this middle range, right? The dos manos or the corto manos of Kali. So we could stay further out, point the weapon, use the top third of the cutting edge, right? And those types of things. And so the tactics in, uh, involved with the sword start to differ than they do with the stick. Now here's something else that I'd like to point out for you guys. When it comes to the uh, blade, okay, deflecting or blocking is done differently. See, with the, with the stick, with the single stick, because it's round, you can make contact weapon to weapon anywhere and it's gonna be the same. However, because you have a cutting edge, normally the cutting edge is the softest part of the weapon. And if you go cutting edge to cutting edge, let's just say, the blades will ding, fracture, and dull the cutting edge of your weapon. And that's a big no-no because then that weapon's considered useless, just wait, right? And so we have to use the side or the spine, which means, look at where my knuckle line is for a second. Where this knuckle line is where the cutting edge is. That's true on swords and that's true on, on uh, knives too. Okay, so if I'm deflecting, and I deflect here to here, I don't wanna uh, beat up my blade and make it dull, so I have to turn my front knuckle line and use the side of the blade, or I have to turn it this way, okay? Because you have those articulations with the blade and you don't have those with the stick, when you do stick sparring, even though you're sparring with the sword, if you're not understanding those small articulations, you're completely missing the point of the sword. Right? And if you're doing those articulations and you're trying to train with the sword to prepare for the stick, again, you're just doing it for no good purpose, right? So you have to understand these two main differences between one weapon versus the other because these small articulations is really where the stick and the knife differ. All right, so those are some of the similarities and differences between the stick versus the blade. Now, are they the same? I would venture to say that 80% of it's probably the same, but the 20% that differs is radically different and it really changes everything else, okay? If you only have a stick and you're trying to learn swordsmanship, that's okay. Use that same tip that I just gave you about the front knuckle line and learn how to make those small articulations with your stick, and that way, at the very least, you're having the same articulations as you would with the blade, okay? What the problem becomes is when I'm trying to learn the sword and I'm using stick-based tactics and manipulations because that it doesn't apply. One or the other just kind of falls apart towards the end and that's really where you need it to come together. Yes, you can build proper mechanics and proper distancing and line familiarization and all these wonderful attributes that you need to know using the stick that applies to both weapons. However, in the actual articulations between the stick versus the blade, those small movements that we make with the blade are all the difference, okay? Everything else kind of just goes out the window if you don't have these small articulations. So if you understand the differences and you want to train for the long blade, either you have to bring that imaginative resource to the training table or uh, training weapons are cheap enough these days. So have your set of sticks, 
and then have a set of aluminum training blades or even wooden training swords and understand that when you pick it up that, hey, this has this characteristic, this is what I need to do, okay? I like the idea of having separate weapons because then I'm not forced to use a, you know, mental power on this. I just know when I pick up a wooden sword, it operates as a sword. I pick up a wooden stick, it operates as a stick. And so just have that difference, get on Amazon or there's plenty of suppliers that sell training weapons, uh, replicas to uh, real weapons. Just get those, okay? That, that, that goes a long ways by picking up exactly what you want to work with, okay? All right, guys, so I know it's kind of a short video, but I got this question off of uh, the last couple of videos more than once, so I wanted to make a uh, quick video for you guys and just answer it for you. In the meantime, guys, if you guys like this video, please like, share, subscribe, turn on that notifications bell, get in the comments section, let me know if you got something out of this or if you'd like for me to cover something else, and until then, keep your blade sharp and keep your skills sharper. See ya.